All right, you all, welcome back to NRL Fantasy Analysis. In this one, we have a lot to talk about. If you're looking to find out which guys you need to trade out of your side, then this is the video for you. We're going to go through, obviously, all these players on the interchange there that are not playing this week. I think the smartest thing to do when you're looking to trade out a couple of guys this week is obviously creating a list from, from one to six or seven or you know, whatever the, uh, the amount of people you have out in terms of their priority of trading out. What's their likelihood of getting back in the side in the next bunch of weeks? You know, what's their likelihood of playing round 13 in the bye? And we'll go from there. So this is the people squad right now. And you can see we have a lot of guys on our interchange in our emergencies that are out. But then you can look at the alternates and it's very much similar there. Obviously, with Rapana in that one as well. So we'll look through the people squad at the moment. Obviously, in our starting side, I've just moved everyone over to the interchange and emergencies that aren't playing this week. Um, but then you look at the edge and you've got Fui and Schuster as our starting edges, which is not too exciting. Um, you know, coming down to the centers, Avrilo and Peachy is fine. And then wing fullbacks is also okay. But we look to the interchange and, and our, our only guaranteed starter this week, well, off the bench, but um, guy that's actually playing is going to be Walsh with, uh, you know, our number one interchange position. We then have Walker, who is actually touch and go to be playing as well. I'd, I'd imagine there's maybe a 40 to 50% chance that I think Walker will play this week. He has a shoulder, lingering shoulder issue, which seems to be okay because he's had that since the start of the season. He did get a couple extra knocks on it, but I think, I believe from what NRL Physio said and a few other guys have said that it's more just managing the pain on that one. So um, the shoulder seems like it should be okay. It's more the foot that we're worried about, the ankle. Which he, uh, which he heard on the weekend and, and sort of hobbled back into play to keep going, which is good signs, but there's a good chance that he doesn't play this week. Obviously, they've got Lamb coming back in the sixth role, but, you know, if, if Walker doesn't play, then then does Suwali play? Or, you know, they're going to be obviously pretty light on in that uh, halves position. So Walker there, I'm saying, yeah, about a 50% chance of playing. So let's just say he doesn't play. We then have seven players that are out this week with Fafita being suspended. Obviously, he's still got the, the green tick, but... He is suspended this week for two weeks. All right. So we got Walker as a 50-50. I, I doubt that he's going to be a trade-out target for us this week. So we'll move him on. We have Simkin, Stefano. Obviously, the two guys that have been dropped from the Tigers side this week. And you've got to have a little think about it and go, well, what, what are the chances of Simkin coming back into the squad? Okay. So little gets, little gets moved back into the team. You know, there's a reason he got dropped in the first place, right? I think... My, my thoughts on the reason that he got dropped is the Tigers weren't playing very well. And they're like, we've got to change it up somehow. Simkin's dominating in the, in the New South Wales Cup. I think this might be a good opportunity to, to bring him back in. I thought Little was actually playing fairly solidly compared to you know, the majority of the Tigers players. But I just don't think they have the cattle in other positions. Whereas in the hooker position, they had Simkin to come in who had been doing well. He played well in the trial. Um, and of course, he comes into first grade and actually doesn't doesn't run the ball a lot, doesn't do a lot. Um, passes were okay out of dummy half. His first game was pretty decent, and then I think from then he didn't play that well. So that's why they've moved back too little. So what are the chances he comes back? Look, there might be a decent chance he plays, comes back onto the bench, and that but that kind of kills us anyway. He's already made, what, 150K. So if he comes onto the bench and scores a bunch of 20s, then that's nothing too exciting at all, obviously. And he hasn't got too much money to make. He has to come back into the starting side and score a few more 40s for him to to make some more cash. So my thoughts on him is that his outlook's pretty bleak right now. Yes, he might play, like he should be able to play in round 13. Maybe it's off the bench or something. But he's been dropped for a reason. And obviously they've managed to change uh, that team so much this week, which is annoying. So he's pretty high on the on the priority list of trading out. The thing with him is the fact that he's 380k, and who can you get for that price? Obviously, no one, no one too much around that price. But you're looking to probably downgrade. And if you're using him as a downgrade option, you're getting someone who's about you know from 250 up to 300 odd. You've got guys like Flegler, um, who are the other guys like Nico Hines. These types of players that you could trade him to uh, in that sort of a little bit higher price bracket in the 300s, and then you can go a bit cheaper with some of these you know centers and wing fullbacks and and whatever. But yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that in, in other videos in terms of you know, the actual trading targets from all the different positions. So Simpkin's going to be fairly high up the the option list in terms of our trade outs. Stefano, I think, is in a different situation. To me, it's a very strange one that he's been dropped because he's actually been 
as a lot of people have said, and a lot of people that know a decent amount about footy and a lot of this community here are saying that he's actually been playing pretty well. And, and I would agree with that. They've brought in, who is it, Hopgood, uh, Sean Bloor gets a, gets a chance. Um, Bloor comes back, he's obviously a little bit cheaper. He can use his, him as a trade-down option. But he actually hasn't been scoring too well in fantasy in, in New South Wales Cup. So just be aware of that. Obviously, he's super cheap and doesn't have to score too well to, to make some cash. But Stefano, I think, could come back into the side at any point. And he's someone I think you can wait a little bit longer holding him than I think you can Simkin. That's just that's just my opinion. So I'd have I'd have Sim, Simkin above Stefano in your trade out targets this week, with the chances of him coming back. Obviously, he's not going to be making too much money anymore, but using him for number for round thirteen could be ideal. So in a normal week when you have maybe one or two outs, then I think you could trade him out. But in this week and looking at my squad right now, the types of players that we have in here. I think he's a little bit lower down the, the trade-out targets. For feet is a different story. So he's been now, he fought at the judiciary and, and failed, and he now gets two weeks on the sidelines. So if we look at Fafita's outlook, right, we got we got the two weeks, um, the next two, so round 10 versus Penrith. We then have round 11, he's going to be out as well. He then will be back for round, thir- uh, round 12 before being out of the team again during Origin in round 13. So if you look at it, you've got three out of the next four weeks he doesn't play. When, when you've got someone like that who's obviously clearly a keeper, but 921k, it really makes you think of the amount of trades or the amount of you know, what you can do with that cash. You know, If you were to downgrade him to around a 700k player, you then have 220k to play with, with guys like you know, Simkin. If you have a little bit extra in the bank, you might be able to get someone that's around that 650k, you know, they could be an up and, uh, a fallen gun, an up and coming keeper, it could be a, a wing fullback center, it could be you know, a, a David Clemmer, could be a Kurt Mann. These types of guys that you could target and almost pick up two keepers with obviously trading out one. My caveat with, with trading out David Fafita is the fact that a lot of people have around 20 trades, 19 trades, 18 trades, obviously with 18 being the, the max trades you could have used over the first sort of nine rounds there. If you're sitting down somewhere around that 2021, 19, 18, then I'd really suggest keeping for feeder because you're going to have a big, big issue trying to get him back in at the back end of the year. If you're making all these trades week to week, obviously, if you're someone that's that's trading twice a week, you're probably going to be at about, what, six trades come round 17 when you're trying to yeah, make a good team there and then have like three for the last nine rounds or something. So uh, whatever it is, eight rounds. So for feeder, I think if you've got 23 plus trades, I think you can do it, and it's probably worth it. Just having that much money sitting on the sidelines when we've had, when we've done that with a bunch of players already, I think you know he's gonna. There's a chance that he doesn't back up as well after round 13 for for 14 there. So that might be four out of five rounds, and then you've got to think of round 17 he's not playing, and then you've got to think of you know obviously they don't play in that middle of round 15 when they have Origin two. There's a chance he can get injured. Um, and he could also not back up after 17. So it could be a lot of rounds that he doesn't actually play. So think about that with him. I think if you've got enough trades, then you can do it. But if you're running low, so the, you know, 23 plus I think is okay. Uh, and we'll have a look at that in this people's squad. But we obviously, we obviously have a lot of other guys that you know might not even get game time going forward. Uh, Spencer, at 370k is a slight worry again. Just that price is a bit annoying. For him, he's not. Uh, he hasn't. He, he hasn't been named again, which... I heard, or well, someone was telling me in the comments that he didn't end up playing New South Wales Cup last week. It was a few like COVID issues. Uh, he doesn't have it, but I mean the breaches and stuff like that. So he didn't play that, and that might be a reason he's on the bench. Uh, he's on the reserves list again because he's been one of their great forwards off the bench. I agree. I, I think anyway, the impact he provides is great. Um, so a little bit strange on his one. I think at three hundred seventy k, he's not taking up too much bank, obviously, and. And you could try and hold him up towards that 13. I, I think he's someone that's going to get a decent role. I'd imagine someone like Isaiah Yeo is going to make uh, make that origin side. And Eisenhuth would play 13, for example. Kirk Capewell has a chance of playing. So Martin would keep in that 12 role. And then there should be some extra minutes on the bench there. So I'd, I'd expect him to score well in 13 if he gets that chance. But I, I understand a lot of people might be worried that he's not going to get back into the side. And that's completely fair. If you're someone that's not dealing with too many injuries this week, I'd I'd say you could trade him out. I'm thinking him and Stefano on a similar level in terms of their trade out value. Obviously, Stefano is about what 57k more expensive, which is you know which is helpful if you need him if you want to trade him to 
to get to a higher gun, for example, I think you can do Stefano. But other than that, Lane is a little bit lower on the trade-out targets list than someone like our next guy, which is Momorowski. And how, how annoying is that, that, that a lot of teams hold on to him? What's his percentage on now? Just saying, 7.5% still own him. So a bit of a pain in the ass with, with Matt Burton maintaining his spot. And when we when Mom got suspended in the first place, it was like, okay, he's been a really, really good sensor for them. Burton's come in around, you know, just before that time, uh, started playing decent, and then he, you know, he's able to maintain that spot with Mom coming back now. So the question is going to be, where is he going to get that opportunity? And it's, either, it's probably going to either come through injury or he's going to play round 13. I think he'll definitely play 13 in some capacity uh, with Burton moving to the seven or the six role, depending on who makes it. Obviously, clear he should make it or... If he's not, he's going to be injured, um, and Burton's going to be an incredible option. But yeah, with with Mom still not getting that spot, he's obviously not injured, so there's no other reason why he should be on the, in the 18th man role. Um, yeah, at 526k, I think he's one of the the higher priority trades on this list this week, up there with the Simkin. So if you have those two, I'd say Momrovsky and Simkin. You could what does that give you? About 900k, yeah. So 900k to use across two players. If you have any extra in the bank, like our People Squad does, you know, I laugh at, I laugh at some some teams that are post they're trading two cash cows and they get two guns. I'm like, how the hell do you have like 700k, or why do you have 700k in salary remaining um, from trades in previous weeks? And yeah, that's something to probably talk about in another video. The the silliness of having 700k or 800k. That's what 10% of your, or at the start of the season, 10% of your bank almost. Just sitting in the just sitting in the salary, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I'd suggest Momorowski as being one of your higher priority trades this week. Pappenhausen hopefully plays this week. He's in the 19 jersey in reserves. Usually with the Storm, if they name them in the reserves, just from previous experience, they end up sneaking on either onto the bench or into the starting side. So and shuffling things around. They they like oh, well, Bellamy likes to play some games with that one there. So I'd suggest Pat probably plays. It has been three weeks, and if he doesn't play this week, it'll be a four-week injury, which would be the the longer part of of the injuries kind of thing. And when they were talking about that, yeah, there was like, oh, it could be two to four weeks, and obviously this is the back end of that. But I'd suggest that he's a good chance of playing. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be trading him out, but obviously very painful if we've all held him this long. Well, the majority of people have, and then he's going to miss four weeks, and then miss thirteen, and he might, yeah. Might not, might not play after 13 and you know, get rested and all that sort of stuff. So that's something to think about with these types of guys. Obviously, this is the people squad, and and we're in a little bit of dire straits at the moment with you know basic, basically seven of these players a chance of not playing. If we get lucky, Walker plays, Pat plays, and we have five out, which means that the two trades we make gives us an 18th man, which would be which would be great. And at worst, if we just have 17 playing this week, we'll, we'll cop that. Um, but yeah, that's the... That's the thoughts on, on the squad there. We'll move on to uh, the alternates and, and we'll just rank, because who else we got different? Just Rapana in this one. Other than that, it's Pat Blaney, Simkin, Stefano, Fafita and Walker as chances are not playing. Um, and obviously this team is probably set up a little bit better in terms of, you know, you've got Toto there. Uh, Moses and Man doesn't have Cleary, but, you know, Curran in there playing well. Um, you know, McCulloch and Braley, which is good. But... Rapana, let's talk about him. So hamstring injury, one to two weeks. I'd suggest that it's probably going to be two weeks. Uh, with with hamstring injuries, they seem to linger a little bit longer than than anyone else. And if you are a manly fan and you love Tommy Chavovich, then you are you understand how long these hammies uh, take to come back and and be at full fitness. So um, a little bit annoying. We obviously seen, saw him limping at the back end of last game, which is not good. So if it's a two week injury, which I think it would be, you got 10, 11, comes back for thir- uh, come back comes back for twelve. And is you know hopefully close close to full fitness, but then has the buy in round thirteen. Do you think there's a chance they just leave him out for twelve? So it could be four weeks, really. If we're if we're being pessimistic, Rapana for four weeks is a chance, really. But if not, you got him as a a return in round twelve, and then and then off for, for round thirteen. And if you think that you know if it's let's just say it's two weeks for hamstring, one week in thirteen, you got three out of four weeks that he's not playing. Do you class him as a keeper? And I think you've got to class him as a keeper in. In the centers, I had a bunch of people asking him, asking me on Monday if he's a trade in target. So, yeah, he's definitely obviously scoring well. You got to you got to look at your like in this team here, my alternates. I've got to look at the balance that I have in centers and wing fullback. So obviously I have Pat that's going to come back uh, into our wing fullback. So that gives us four there. 
And the rest of the guys, yeah, there's no other center cover apart from Rapano. Obviously, we're set up pretty well with that. But you look into round 13, and I'm going to have Teddy and Pap out. So Laurie and Toto, which is not too bad, having two uh, in our wing fullbacks. I'm going to be fine in the centers, obviously, with one. But it's just like, well, is it is it worth moving him on? And in this in this side here, we've got, yeah, Fafita again. I've got 24 trades, which is a bit nicer. I could I could trade a Fafita and a Simkin, for example, or a Lanyu or whatever I want to do and get two really good players still. Um, or I could go for a Rapana and and a Simkin or something like that, and that gives me about a, a million dollars to spend. But again, that's kind of like, well, you get a real cheapy, like a, a Sean Bloor, and you get a, a gun, like a 750k gun. But then, you know, the, th the thoughts around bringing in Bloor is, that will he will he get dropped? You know, if he has a bad game, is he going to get straight out of the side? You know what I mean? So... They're all the things we've got to think about with uh, these interchange and, and the, the guys that are out this week. Let me know how you guys are set up. Obviously, I'm getting a lot of questions around around different players and around, you know, my team's, you know, been blown up kind of thing. Please check in this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, if you're liking these, please hit like and subscribe. I appreciate all the support so far. We will catch you in the next few videos, guys. We'll talk about a lot of the trade out, the trade in targets now in all the different positions, the cash cows, the, the guns, the mid-ranges that you might need looking into round 13 and looking into build keepers uh, into your squad and, and how to best do that. So as I said, hope you enjoy this. We'll catch you in the next one, guys. Have a good day.